the challenges keep coming in different ways. And it's just all a matter of, are you going to run straight toward it? Or are you going to say, well, that's a sign I'm done. I can't do this anymore. That's life. And if it's something that you want, then you got to grab it with both hands and go for it. Welcome to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast, where we take you behind the scenes of wholesaling and house flipping businesses. The systems and automation that we discuss will help you build a real business instead of another job for yourself. From beginners to those doing hundreds of thousands a year, we go deep into the details and strategies that are working today. And now your host, Bill Allen. Hey everybody, welcome to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. This is Bill Allen and today I've got another one of our Seven Figure Runway members and somebody who's actually really close to me in the market. So right down the street from me over in Destin, uh, we share kind of that Santa Rosa County and she's even been talking to me a little bit about getting into Pensacola and things. So really cool to bring somebody else on. I know you guys have heard from Ariane and Chris Lemire who are right down the road from me. They've been on the podcast a few times. So this will be fun to interview somebody else down in the Gulf Coast area over by Pensacola and Destin. So uh, everybody, welcome to the podcast. Please, Miss Shannon Amos. Hey, Shannon, how are you? Hey, I'm great. How are you, Bill? I'm doing good. Um, uh, I, we got to spend some time together down in Pensacola recently, right? So we, I was down there flying for the Navy. I set together a little meetup for the runway and altitude members. And uh, we got together at a sushi place and just ate. It was a, like all you can eat sushi place in Pensacola. I love going there every time I go and we just ate and ate and ate. And yeah. it was really fun yeah. to spend some time with you guys. What's that? And got in trouble for having too much sushi left on our plates. <laughs> yep, yep. So Shannon was like, oh, yeah, I want to order this and this. And the guy's like, you know, I back charge you for if you leave any. And you're like, that's ah, fine. She had like three rolls at the end going, what do I do with this? I said, throw it in your purse and uh, take it home. So there you go. All right. So why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your story? So I know that you, um, and, you have a pretty interesting kind of uh, background and story about how you uh, started into this and some of the things you're doing are pretty amazing. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. So um, you in mentioned um, Ariane and Chris Lemire and um, I call her Ari because that's how I, um, how she introduced herself when I first met her. Um, but we shared um, speech patients. We worked together at a local um, nursing facility, rehab facility um, both speech pathologists, and um, so my husband and I had dabbled a little bit in um, some rental properties. I mean, not much at all. One that we had lived in previously, and then another we thought was a, a great opportunity that um, we did buy specifically for rentals. And I'm just like probably you know high percentage of people out there that watch all the flipping shows and you think it's so awesome and so cool, and I'd love to do that. And oh, it's so easy. This would be just what a, what a great fun time. You know, we should just buy a house sometime and flip it. And so I'm watching Arianne over the course of, I guess, I don't know, a year and a half or so. I, mean, I, I think she, by the time that I came to work at the facility, she was probably a good um, year and a half to two years in. And so um, she was there a lot and then not there a lot. And it was because she was getting so busy um, amping up her real estate um, business and, um, was primarily focused at the time on, on flips. And so I just kind of like, you know, got up close to her and would pick her brain a little bit. And, um, and she was really excited um, about what she was doing and they were having a fun time. And this was actually before they came to the first flip hacking live. So this has been a little, little bit ago. Um, and so, you know, I just asked them to, you know, would they be willing to sit down and, meet with my husband and I just to tell us a little bit about the industry and and so they did that and we had dinner maybe once um, and I would just again pick her brain over lunch and so I think she could tell that I was really serious and so one December it was December 2016 she reached out to me and we've been somewhere because we were driving back and she said I've got this really great opportunity it's a friend of mine who's a wholesaler and um, he's got a great property in Miramar Beach, and I think it would be a great first flip for you. And she said, um, it, it's a fantastic, um, in a fan, fantastic location. Um, it definitely needs updates, but it's mostly cosmetic. I think it would pre be a good one to start with. And she said, we really just are at max capacity with what we can take on, but it's such a great deal that we're going to find a way if you don't want it. But I'm, I would love to you know, pass it over to you. And um, 
So we, we actually on the way home stopped by and just kind of, you know, did our little drive by by the, by the road, you know, kind of felt out the neighborhood and um, we didn't go peeking into the windows or anything that we were tempted, but um, she did tell us that it was occupied. So we, we knew better than to do that. But, you know, we felt pretty confident just from the outside that you know, it would be something that we were interested in. So I ended up calling the wholesaler and I met with him, um, I think the very next day. Um, and he told me that, I mean, he may have just been telling me this. I've actually not gone back to ask him if he was just trying to get me to make a good solid offer, but he told me he had another offer um, on the table. And so we did the walkthrough and um, definitely was interested. And my husband and I had already talked about, you know, what would we offer? What are we able to offer? What can we do? And so um, at the end of our tour, I made a full price cash offer on this house and he took it. And so um, with the stipulation that you have to close in seven days. So we're rolling into Christmas and we're like, oh my gosh, well, we're going to have a house in seven days. And so we did, we closed, um, it was pretty seamless, closed on the 15th of December. And um, so we are, I come home and I'm looking at my husband like, what, we, what are we going to do? We now are flipping a house and I'm still working. Um, luckily only part-time as a speech pathologist, but my husband um, is a physician and um, very busy and wasn't going to be able to, to really help me much. And um, so I decided, wow, um, let's just kind of get through Christmas and we'll start making contacts with our different contractors and um, meeting people, getting people to take bids and um, you know, kind of go from there. And in the meantime, I thought, well, um, I'm not going to want to have another real estate agent list my properties for me because that's going to take a big chunk out of the profits. So I better sign up for a class also. And so by January, I was signed up for a, a, one of the three-day weekend courses and um, was you know, now interviewing contractors and trying to figure out where to start on this project and also trying to get my real estate license. And so, um, so really, I mean, kind of, I don't want to stay on that topic for too long, but we, um, we did flip the property. I was on site um, every day that my contractor was there. I am say 95% of the time, my husband and I pulled out the carpet. We pulled out the kitchen cabinets and he did come on a weekend and help me with that. Um, I did, you know, I did all of the designing in terms of how I wanted the kitchen to look, what did I want the bathroom vanities to be, bought all of the, the lighting, faucets, everything like that. Um, and then, so by, um, while we're in the midst of this flip, we decided to hook up with another real estate agent at the time that had, we'd been working with. And by February, we had another property. And, um, so we're now simultaneously doing two. And, um, but anyway, by May, we had, um, had the property on the market and the first one that we had, and it was under contract in eight days. And that was really um, inspiring because we're like, okay, well, maybe we're okay with this. And um, if we can get a house under, under, under contract in eight days, maybe I'm okay at what I'm doing. And, um, and so... So by May, we had that property under contract, and then we had started our second one. Do you, do you remember how much you made on that first property? Actually, I actually did really well. Um, so we purchased that at um, $180,000 and all in, signed, sold, delivered. Um, we made um, just over $38,000. So, nice. That's fantastic. Yeah. It was a so, good first one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Ariane and Chris, you, you, you knew Ariane, you got together with her, you, yeah. you started kind of talking about what you wanted to do and get just showing that you were interested in that. Do you think that if you hadn't kind of told her all of those things and she had called you with that property, do you think you guys would be flipping houses at some point or did she, that kind of accelerate the process for you? It's hard to really say. Um, I probably would still be working part-time, treading water, trying to figure out, you know, where to even get started. So, I mean, I, I have to give a lot of credit to them in terms of, and 
you know, you know, Arianne and Chris. And so it was kind of one of these where I'm like, well, gosh, if they can do this, like, because our, their personalities are very different. They're very, they're, they're quiet and extremely brilliant people. But um, I would not have imagined them going into this industry um, initially. And so it was kind of, it was inspiring to me to watch them doing it. Um, and so I, I honestly don't know. I think that we would have dabbled really lightly, but I don't know if I would have had the guts or knowledge enough to just even know where to start and get a good deal. Um, so I have to, I definitely think that they were a huge push in that process. Yeah. Isn't it amazing to see that just somebody setting the example for you can really change the way that you structure things and just build confidence. So that's a big part of why I do this and why I want to bring people on the podcast is to give those listeners the confidence to, to do the same thing. You know, they got somebody that's in a full-time job who's dreaming about doing this. It sounds to me like, you know, Ariane gave you that little push that you needed that, Hey, here's, here's what appears to be a little bit of a softball if you want to take it. But you know, you guys had to make the decision to do it. And it's really cool to hear that they were willing to share that with you. Like they knew about it. And I think if, from what I hear, it sounds like if they, if you hadn't put yourself out there to say, Hey, I'm interested in this. I want to do this. I want to hear more about what you're doing. Can I, can I buy you lunch? Can I, you sit down with me and my husband? Then they never would have called you, right? They just would have said, we'll find out a way to do this one or we'll share it with somebody else. It's just the kind of people that they are, right? They, yes. they really wanted you to do well. They, didn't see, they wanted to see you succeed. And in that was a phone call saying, hey, we got this property that we think that would be really good for you. I mean, who else does that? That's, that in this world, it's, I mean, a lot of our members do, I, I think. And I, I know that I would and I know that you would and all the other people yes. that I bring on the podcast would. And, but a lot of people in this industry wouldn't, right? They want, they want to know what's in it for me. What am I going to make on this? How am I going to get a piece of the profit? Hey, I brought you the deal. Can I you give me 10% of the deal and I'll tell you more about yes. it? Stuff like that. So a third, they gave up $38,000, basically took it from potentially going into their bank account to going into your bank account and starting this journey for you guys. It's really kind of amazing to see that. Um, and then the other thing that I heard in that was you were kind of starting to do it all. You know, you wanted to rip out the carpet. You wanted to rip out the, uh, the cabinets. You wanted to redo the kitchen. You wanted to um, get your real estate license to save on fees and all of that stuff. Yes. And that's a typical, that's a typical journey for that new flipper. Yes. You know, and that's the same thing that I did. I did the exact same thing. I mean, I, I'm definitely not, I know you're looking at me like, oh, what's he going to say about this? He's going to beat me up on this and tell me I shouldn't be doing that. But no, that was your journey. That's the way that you did it. You got in there and some other people might be building it out or scaling it out or changing things right from the beginning. But for me, uh, I did the same thing. You know, I was jumping in there and I think that that's the journey that I need to go on. It's probably the journey that you needed to take too. Yes. So, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit to see if you're still doing that as we get a little further down the road. But the other thing I want to ask you is you said that you guys bought another property in February before this one was even done. So tell me, let's, how did you, like, why did you do that? How did you do it? What were you thinking at that time? Because you, this, this wasn't proven. This model wasn't successful. You didn't know how much money you were going to make. Were you like, what was it that made you decide to say, I know that we got this property. We bought it cash. We're flipping it right now. And yes. we're a couple months into it. Let's go get another one. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't a hundred percent know what I was thinking. In some ways, I think that um, a lot of people thought we were crazy for doing it. And I know that you know, I, I made my husband kind of dig into his pockets a little bit to make my dream come true in a way, because um, you know, I don't think that we a hundred percent knew what we were doing, but number one is that I, I, I was loving it. So I really was enjoying the process. I really was enjoying the journey and I still do. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I guess I just started feeling really confident about it and maybe feeling that this was a passion of mine that could be a potential, you know, second career. And, um, but I also, am just, you know, being in the real estate world, I started paying attention. And I, I know enough about the area to know that it was a, a good deal was there and I just couldn't see myself passing it up. So a lot of it was that, um, you know, I know that there, it was a risk when we bought that first property. Um, it was a risk not knowing what we were doing and I'm still working and having a second job at the time. And so 
I got really comfortable, a little more comfortable with taking those risks. And, um, but I, I you know, it, I really don't know that I could put into words why we decided to do it. But other, other than I saw where we were moving with, we were on timeline. I was watching the market. I knew that I was pretty confident I was going to get a good return. And I just felt like that when the right thing came along and it presented itself that I couldn't let it pass us by. And that second property had 127 offers on it. So apparently it was a good deal. Um, we had to offer, you know, higher than what it was listed for, but we ultimately, um, we ultimately won and um, got the property. So, I mean, I think it was, was a really good deal. And um, it was also one of, one of my proudest ones and ones that had done the best. So, so you're saying there was 127 offers on it when you bought it? When we, when, yeah, so we, it was an MLS, believe it or not. Okay. It was on the MLS and 127 offers went in for highest and best. And we were one of the 127. So, wow. So I thought you were saying, when, I thought you were saying when you sold it. So when you were buying oh, it, 127 no. offers on the MLS, you're dealing with a real estate agent. Yes. So, so this one probably is, is one where you're going, okay, there's a lot of competition here. We might not even get this one. So yes. let's, let's, let's make a play for it. Let's see. I've done that plenty of times and then gone, uh Oh, yeah. I got it and I got to figure it out. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay. So, so this was three years ago that we're talking about. You bought your first property and it sounds like in December of 2016. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So three years ago. So this is the first year you did this property that you bought in December and then you bought another one in February. You sold that first one in uh, May, it sounds like. And then, so the second one, how did you do on the second one? Just, it sounds like you did really well. We did we did really well. Um, so it, it was about a three month turnaround. Um, and then it was on the market for about six weeks. And, um, so I mean, for that one, you know, without looking exactly, I mean, I think we were still, you know, 30, 32 on that property. So we did well Nice. Um, and had it turned around um, in September. So, Okay. And then was there, was there more properties that first year or was it two yes. the first year? There were, there were more. Okay. So yes. you were already at $70,000 in profit from the first two properties. You're, you're less than, you're like nine months into your journey. You're continuing to buy houses. So at this point, I'm assuming that you're feeling like this is, this is the path for you. You want to, you want to do this. You want to figure out how to do this full time. Yes. And actually by June of the, of that year of 2017, I did, um, step back from speech pathology completely to focus on uh, real estate investing. So I did, um, I still, you know, in the, in the medical world, you have, um, PRN, which is considered occasional. And so I did stay on and I did a little bit here and there, but I knew that I was already feeling that having a, a second job, even though part-time was, um, pulling me away from where I really felt like I was being led and where my, where my heart was. So, by June, then I had, um, I had left my position and started. Okay. So sell your first house in May, June, you're like, I'm out of here. So one month later and you're working on a second house. And so then I'm assuming it starts snowballing from there. Yeah. So what was your job like when you were, when you were working, was it full-time like nonstop or was it more of a c contract type job? Is it kind of as needed type basis where you can step out and come in and, and, and work? For speech pathology? Yes. Um, so up until I had my daughter, who's six and a half, I was full time. And I've been in every level of, I mean, every level of management, I guess, from that I could be in. So it was, you know, typically full time, 40 hours, I had to be there at a certain time, had to leave at a certain time. I had meetings that were set and told, you know, this is when you have to be there. And, um, and, and so, you know, you, I had to work. I'll never forget the, the first, the November of 2017 was the first Thanksgiving somewhere from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I always had to work in 17 years of speech pathology. I had to work. It was the first year that I could remember not having to work on some part of Thanksgiving. And isn't, so, isn't that nice? Like th this is, this is, um, this will come out after Thanksgiving, but we're just before Thanksgiving recording this. And I just had a meeting with my team, the seven figure flipping team. And I said, Hey guys, this is, I know that you guys in the past, we've been checking emails. We have a lot of clients and, and people in the mastermind groups and things like that, that are constantly posting in Facebook. It doesn't matter if it's Thanksgiving, the day after Thanksgiving, things like that. But I really need you guys to, for four days to just shut things down. 
Like we've got to figure out we're a, we're a business. We're just like everybody else. They understand they're, they're, they're in their living room because they're not working like what you do for our flipping business. We're going to take some time off and, and be, and, but they're going to be asking questions about their company and stuff like that. And they're going to expect the answers or feedback or things. I said, you guys got to just not check your email and stuff like that. And that's really cool for us as business owners is we can kind of set our schedule and do, you know, if we, if those are the four days that we want to take some time to put into work, we can, but we don't have, we don't want to go to work. We don't have to. I, a lot of the times in the military, I was, I was deployed for birthdays, for holidays, for lots of things like that. And I didn't have a choice. And now it's just so nice to set my schedule and just say, you know what, I'm going to say this, this weekend was one of the first weekends where I just said, I'm going to put my computer down. My, my wife was gone. She's in England. So it, I had to watch all three kids. So I just spent time with my boys and I wasn't checking my phone and my email and on there nonstop and things like that, like I have been in the past. So, yes. okay. So your job was full time. So a lot of people are listening to this saying it's eight, eight to five or I got an eight to five for me as a, as a pilot, I was able to kind of go to the job site if it was raining or really nasty weather, or maybe take lunch and go there and things like that. So, or I could, I could schedule my time in the, at night. I could fly at night so I could be available till about two o'clock in the afternoon, get mm-hmm. do the morning, or I could fly really early and be done by two o'clock in the afternoon and have the afternoons and stuff like that. So I had that, that was a unique ability that I had to do in my job. It sounds like you were going on kind of nights, weekends, stuff like that, and just finding the time to get it done for those six or seven months. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So, we have a lot of different people who listen, who are at different times and places in their job. And a lot of people have full-time jobs that are trying to get into this, but so it's possible. Some people will just, you heard Jaime on the podcast. He's like, I'm, I quit. I'm in, I'm just going in. And then you've got other people like me who it took me, you know, a year and a half, two years to leave that full-time active duty job to go into the reserves. And then for you, it was kind of six, seven months later, you're just saying, Hey, I'm at it. And you still did some part-time work. It sounds like. Yes. I mean, I, I, I do feel very blessed because, you know, I didn't have to have my job. I mean, my, I've, I've always wanted my own career. My husband has always encouraged that. Um, it was, I do feel very blessed that he is and was stable enough in his position, um, in his line of work where it did give me more freedom where I, it kind of took that pressure off that I felt like I could take a a little bit more of a leap. Um, But I still, and still now feel that, I mean, I have an expectation for myself. And so a lot of people do look at me and think, Oh, you're married to a physician. Why are you doing this? And well, you know, because that's, this is for me and um, this is for, you know, our family. And I also want to be personally fulfilled in what I'm doing in life and, being a stay at home physician's wife for me, that's just not who I am. And so I was very blessed that he supported me doing those things and and getting out there. Um, But I do very much understand that not everybody, you know, has that situation. And I do feel that I was lucky that I had him behind me. So you don't feel as much of that, you know, pressure to get everything done. So um, it was a little bit easier to, when it was time to leave that I knew we were going to be okay. So I think it's yeah. okay anyway, but you know. No, I see that. But look, you guys are a team, right? So you're, you're trying to figure out what your skill set is, what you want to do, what your goals are. And you've got some, you're a very driven woman. I've spent time with you. I know that you, you want, you're not going to sit around and just do nothing. Just like you, you, you're going to get out there. You're going to take action. You're going to do something, whether it's, you know, in that job that you've done for a long, long time, 17 years. And now, now this is you're, you're driven to go out there and make it happen. And you're going to use the things, the tools that you have and the unique abilities and, and whether it's, whether it's funds, whether it's time, whether it's um, your, your eye for design, whatever it is. And you took it and you molded it and decided that this, these are the, these are the things that I have that are working for me. These are the things that I have that aren't working for me so well. How can I take all this and figure out how to, how to build it? And I'm the same way. Like, we, we do well, like myself and my wife, she, she works at Starbucks, you know, exactly. and people look, look at us and go, what are you, what are you doing? Why would you do that? Well, she enjoys it and it gets her out of the house. It gets her meet, meeting people, talking to people, getting, you know, a, a, she, it gives her something that she, she enjoys doing. Yeah. Gives, 
it's, that's something that's hers, that she's got a different group of friends. She's got different people. She's got, she got, has Christmas parties and gets to know the different coffees and gets some coffee and sends it to my dad. And he, he loves it. And that's her thing. And who am I to say, don't do that or stop doing it. At first I kind of went, are you sure you want to do that? And she, she loves it. She misses her job as a nurse and being around other people and things like that. And you know, I was one of those people that you're talking about who are like, why, why are you going to do that? Well, that's, that's for her to decide, not for me to decide. Right. And so, and she loves it. And you know, now she wants to do a little bit more and a little bit more. And I'm trying to figure out how to be able to help more around the house with the kids and all this different things. So she can do that because she needs to become that person that she wants to be. That's right. And that's what it sounds like what you found in this house flipping world. You, you became something where now you can provide, you can be, uh, help out the, the family. You can, you can fulfill what you want to do and your kind of dreams and your desires and stuff like that. So really cool to see how all of this kind of happens because I found it here in a place that I never thought that I would find success. If you asked me 20 years ago, you know, or even it was 17 years I've been in the military. If you asked me any time during that, before I started this business, do you think you could you'd be in real estate the way that you are doing what you're doing right now? No, probably like flying for the airlines or a test pilot in one of the helicopter uh, companies or something like that. Because that's what, that's what I do. That's my background. That's who I am. Right. It defines us. Exactly. So I, I never, yeah, I thought speech was my thing. So, um, you know, you never know where life is going to take you. And it's great to see after 17 years that we still have our own passions and a different, you know, that you can change careers if you want to, if it's, if it's what you want and it's what you feel that you're drawn to, then we should go for it. You don't have to do it when you're 25. You can do it you know, when you're, when you're 40, like I was. So it's awesome. Yep. Okay. So that's your thing until you find your other thing. Right. right. And I always say, I'm going to keep doing whatever I'm doing as long as I'm having fun and I'm enjoying it. It's fulfilling me. It's something like that. But you, you had this opportunity that was presented to you by Ariane where you put that out into the world and then instead of shying away from it, you ran right to it. <laughs> so you had that opportunity. You said, you know what? I'm jumping on that. And you got your husband on board and you said, I can do this. And he believed in you and he wanted to be a, a little, a small part of it. Right. He said, I don't have a lot of time, all this stuff, but I believe in you. you. I know that you can do it. And you ran right towards it instead of shying away from it. And that's, that's the catalyst. That's the, that one decision likely that changed everything for your future. And so what I really, the thing that we talked about a lot of flip hacking live, and I, I even talk about on the podcast a lot is those opportunities are presenting themselves on a regular basis, on a daily basis to each of us. Yes. What are we doing with them? Like, what is, what are you doing with it? Are you saying, Oh, I can't do it because of this. I can't do it because of this. You can, you could have made a million excuses to say no to that opportunity. Yes. But instead yeah. you found the one or two reasons to say yes. And that is what, took you from the speech, like I'm the, I'm the speech pathologist person, I'm that person to, hey, yeah. I'm a flipper, right? Yes, exactly. And actually, you know, the first year was a great year for us. Um, and, you know, you kind of think in some ways, oh, well, you know, it's just only going to go up from here. And it didn't quite work out that way. And so, you know, the challenges keep coming in different ways. And it's just all a matter of, how are you going to, you know, are you going to just run straight toward it? And are you going to say, well, that happened and that's a sign I should just, you know, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Um, you know, I lost money or this didn't go the way that I wanted. It was really stressful or, you know, but that's life. And it's, if it's something that you want, then you got to grab it with both hands and go for it. So that's what I'm continuing to try to do anyway. That's um, it. So, okay. So you just mentioned something. So the next year was not as good as the first year. So what happened? The, what, let's, let's dig into, this is not a podcast where we're going to say, Oh, I made $70,000 on my first two deals. I'm the best ever. And then we just hang up the phone. So what is, what, what happened? So we ended really solid on that first year. We closed out four deals. We had two that rolled into 2018 that we were starting. Um, there were multiple things that wasn't, wasn't one, um, but we had contractor problems. Um, we had um, a property that ended up being much more involved than you, you see things. And um, when you go and walk a property, you have this 
you know, you, you have built your budget, you have this idea of what that is going to look like. Well, then, you know, sometimes things change and you get little surprises or big surprises. And, um, and so one particular property um, just took a lot out of us. It was um, a fire damaged property and we ended up having to, um, you know, we did part of the house thinking that this was the right way. We brought in general contractors that really felt like it wasn't going to, um, that we were not going to need to have an engineer come in. And well, then the city had different plans for us. And so we started dealing with the, with the permitting department and what turned into what was always going to be a big project turned into a massive project. And I ultimately just about built a house. I mean, and this, that was probably like number six that I'd ever been on. Um, I mean, we went down to the studs on this property. So the exterior was um, still intact, but we ended up having to take off a third of the roof after we had already put a new roof replacement on. We had to rebuild all of that. We had to rebuild an entire sunroom that was never permitted the first time around by the previous owners. Um, I mean, just on and on and on. So that happened. Um, both so so bef before you move on from yeah. that one, yeah. what are some recommendations that you would give to somebody? So it sounds to me, and I was in the same boat. Okay. Yes. We're, we're flipping houses. We're getting some more confidence. We're starting to think that but everything that we touched kind of turns to gold, right? We're making 30,000, 32,000, 38,000, and we're hitting these, these kind of houses. And then we see one that is a little bit different than what we're used to. In this case, it was a fire damaged house. For me, it was a more expensive house. It was a really yeah. high end house. And that's where I lost my first huge amount of money on a house. And it was an area where I just went, I got this, you know, it's no problem. I got it. I've, I've, I've done something like this just in a different area. And that's when I started getting overconfident. So what are some things that you think could have helped you in that situation that you would have done differently looking back or give a, advice to somebody who's asking you say, oh, I'm looking at a fire damage house tomorrow or something like that. Right. Um, you know, I thought that I w was doing everything, doing my due diligence, so to speak, because I did bring in, you know, three different contractors to look at it. So I thought that I knew what I needed to do to make sure, because I hadn't even bought the property when I brought the, the GCs into it. So I felt like I was doing my homework. Um, but, you know, basically even still, they didn't know everything. And bottom line is number one, I would say, you know, talk to your, to your city or your county. I mean, you need to know, um, you need to understand permitting. You need to really, not that we've not permitted, but something that big. I mean, this ended up being almost, um, you know, lack of, like a rebuild and um, almost like a new construction. So making sure that you get them involved and make friends with your city or your county. Um, they ended up being, they were hard on me, but they also ended up in a lot of ways. I mean, they taught me really critical um, you know, information, taught me critical things that I needed to know moving forward. But I would say, um, you know, make, make friends with them, understand what the expectations are, because a lot of it was a timing thing for me. So if I had gone to them early on from the front end and had them walk that property, then they would have been able to tell me where the problems were going to be on the front end instead. And so I was more reactionary than I was proactive. I thought I was being proactive, but I was not in control. They were in control and ultimately they were able to come through and, um, you know, kind of tell me these are the things that, that you're going to need to get lined up. And I may not have taken that deal. I mean, I, I, prob I probably wouldn't have taken it if I'd known where it was going to lead me. Um, but I thought I'd done my homework and I knew where I was headed. So, I mean, um, you know, I, I hate to say to someone don't, because I don't know that I necessarily felt full of myself. I thought it was a, a good, a good deal. Um, I do sometimes jump the gun still. I mean, I think that, you know, we obviously are risk takers to a certain degree. So you have to have a level of confidence where you feel like that, you know, you know, maybe there are going to be some unknowns and I'm okay with that. I will, you know, I will deal with it. Um, so I hate to say, you know, don't do that because I think that what I learned from that was that um, number one, I'm strong and I had to deal with what, you know, what was handed to me. I had no other choice. I was already in it. And I think that, unfortunately, what I would rather have not had that experience from the standpoint of 
all the stress that I went through, you know, contractor issues, dealing with the city, the money that was lost. But I also think moving forward that it taught me so much about the things that I wanted to get into and not want to get into. Um, and, you know, just, just being able to, to look at the bigger picture. Um, and sometimes it's, sometimes where you can make money is not, it's different than where you think that it is. And so sometimes you may not want to do as much work. I mean, why put myself through all of that just to, you know, even if I'd made $30,000, would it have been worth it, you know, in comparison to these other houses that that house took me eight months to complete and then sat on the market for a while, you know, um, versus another property that, it, it maybe I thought that the numbers were going to be bigger for this other one. A bigger project means bigger numbers, and that's just not not always the case. You know, sometimes bigger projects just bigger problems and bigger headaches, more stress and less money. So, um, so I don't know. I mean, a lot of different. I don't know that I, I don't know exactly what I would have done differently in that case. I think the biggest thing for me would have been getting the city and the county involved on the front end. Um, and I think that I, I looked at them differently than I do now where you can have partners and make build good relationships with the people in your permitting offices. It's really critical and important to your business that you do. Um, don't always look at them as they're going to be there to make my life you know, miserable. Sometimes they do, but they also are there to help. And they really do at the end of the day, have the best interest of, you know, the city and the and the people of your area in in mind. So just make sure that you are not afraid to ask questions and build those relationships and get them involved on the front end. You know, yeah. Can work. you imagine what that would have been like if you built up built the whole house out and then an, an inspector came and you you got it under contract and then they say oh hey this is not permitted or I found a bunch of charred um, plywood up in the roof that needs to be replaced and then you have to rip off everything that you've already done to redo it again and so they I think I think you're exactly right I think you know they'll help you and not being afraid to and and you're you're also interested in doing things right doing them right the right way the first time and that's the key if you do the right thing the first time but there's a couple things that you said in there that I wanted to pull out that I think are really important one is we're and we've talked about this a lot. You're on this journey, right? This was a learning lesson for you. You don't, you don't, you didn't point the finger at anybody else as you were explaining that you said, you know, I, I felt like this is, this was a huge learning lesson for me. I learned so much from it. I won't make those mistakes again. It's the same thing for me. I had like three projects of really expensive houses going on at the same time where I lost money on two of them. It was over $120,000 total that I lost on two, these two properties. I made $10,000 on the other one. And so, and that, that doesn't even include all of my time, effort, the length that we held it, all that stuff. There were some, you know, some, some other things. If you t take all my staff's time that was involved in it, it's a loss. So overall, these are huge learning lessons for me. I'm not touching those houses anymore in that area, at least. Right. And it's just not, not for me. It's just the structure that I have, the business that I have, it just yes. doesn't fit. And so you have that. And then you also are looking for the right people to, to, to trust in this. So a general contractor is going to come bid the project. Oh yeah, I can do that. Sure. We can, we can remove all this stuff. We can put a new roof on it. It'll be fine. You know, that's no problem, you know, and they, they want to get the job. You're sitting there going, maybe, maybe I wouldn't have done the job, but it would have taken the property. Maybe I wouldn't have bought it. But honestly, like looking back on my failures, I just look at them as successes in, in inside of failure. Yes. So it's this, 100% learning lessons. It's these things that I spent time or money or effort or energy or whatever it was on learning a lesson. Now we don't want to learn the lessons. I'm not telling you, if you're listening to the podcast, I'm not telling you to go out there and just buy any house that you see, you know, lose $30,000 on it. And it's, you're going to learn a ton from it. Don't, don't go do that if you can avoid it. But sometimes we, the people that succeed, the people that you hear on this podcast, the people in our mastermind groups, all of those folks, they've all taken lumps, right? They've all They've all gotten knocked down. They've all picked themselves back up. But what they do that other people don't do is they don't say, I'm not doing this anymore. I quit. They're saying, okay, I got it. I learned from it. Now what? Don't do that again. 
you know, I'm going to go do something else. I'm going to, I'm going to take that, put it in my bag of tricks and in my little toolbox and start building out that toolbox to then decide what does my buy box looks like, look like maybe that's it. You just change your buy box and your buy box is, doesn't include huge projects that have all this stuff that are only going to make $30,000. Maybe what you learned is if I got to do a huge project like that, I need to make 80,000 or a hundred thousand. We yeah. always think that I thought that more expensive houses mean more expensive profits, bigger profits, six figure profits. You know what else it, it equals? Six figure losses too. So <laughs> right. huge gaps. Yes. You know? And if I asked for, if I asked for some advice, my advisors, my trusted advisors probably would have told me not to do it. And one of them did. I told the story of Flip Hacking Live. Terry Berger was like, don't buy that house, man. Yes. Nah, nah, nah. I got this. Yeah. You don't want to lend on this one, lend on the other one. And it was a mistake. It was a mistake. And okay. So you've got a great year. You've got a year that you've got some learning lessons. All of it is learning, right? Making money, we're learning, making money, we're, we're learning lessons, losing money, all that stuff. So you, so in 2016, Ariane told you about that property. And then was this the first time that you'd ever come to Flip Hacking Live this year? Yes, it was. Okay. It so was. what took you so long to decide that this, this is something that is, w would be good for me or something to, uh, to check out? Why did, why did it take three years for us to figure out how to get you there? I don't think it would have taken me as long. Um, but the second part of my really sucky 2018 was, um, that both my dads were diagnosed with cancer and, um, and my husband had um, a stroke. So it was a really rough year. And so um, really, I think I was just treading water there for a while, but at the same time, I mean, it's like, I couldn't, I didn't want to stop what I was doing. I still believed in that. Um, I, I did love that I was able to step away and I, I really did. I mean, I still had projects going, but um, I had to step away during that year to be there for my family. And so I did as much as I could. And so this year came around and um, I mean, I, I, I honestly forgot. I know that sounds awful, but because the, it had been, because this went on for about a year with them both being sick um, and, and I lost both of them, unfortunately, um, one a year ago and one in April. And so um, when Ariane had posted something on Facebook, it kind of went like ding, ding, ding again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what she, they had told us changed everything for them. And, the, and so I, mean, I didn't even hesitate. I mean, I took her little code and signed up. And, and so it, I hated that it took me as long as it did, but that was just the way life, you know, that was my path. And um, you know, I don't know that I think maybe God just knew that I wasn't going to be ready for that information. I had to have other things happen in my life, um, unfortunately for me. But um, regardless, I was there in October, and um, I, I mean, everything has, to me, things have really changed um, since that time. I mean, it's hard to believe that it's only been the few weeks that it has because I already feel that where my business is going is I never would have imagined that. I would get move in that direction that fast. So I'm glad that okay. I got one way or the other. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize all, all of that, all of that happened at the same time. So you've got all this stuff going on with the, the houses and then you've got some personal stuff. And um, I, you know, I've shared a lot of, of my personal kind of struggles and to kind of a very similar kind of mindset on, on mine. I feel like James was put into my world at the right time for a reason to slow me down, to start, being more focused on something else and, and pulling myself out of the Navy and saying, I just don't need to be deployed and do all this stuff and, and all these things I need to be around. I need to be there for my family and, and focus on there. And when my focus came here, things changed for me yeah. drastically, personally and professionally. So, exactly. so what do you think? Let's, let's just talk about some of those challenges. We don't need to dig into all of that stuff. I, right. I don't, I, I, it's, it's obvious it's still very painful for you. So uh, what, but for those listening, like a lot of, uh, we start on this with, I'm doing, a, you know, having a great, having, these, these houses are so successful. Uh, we have money to do these things. We have this, uh, I don't need, necessarily need to work. And what people don't see under the surface, we talk about a lot, is all the other things that are, that's going on. Like we, when we walk around on a normal day, nobody sees everything that's happening in somebody's world. So I always tell people, and I hear, I've heard it so many times, it's just, you have no idea what's going on in somebody else's life right now. If they're treating you poorly, if they're cutting you off, if they're 
flipping you the middle. Like they've got something going on in their life right now. It's, it's them, right? It's not about you and what you're doing. So you really think about that. And now that I've put myself, like I've had to go through a lot of this where you're walking around, I'm dropping my kids off at school. Nobody knows that my other son is in the hospital bed with his chest cut open with feeding tubes all over him. And they have no idea what else is going on in your life. It's just, it's not there. We don't wear it around like this badge. Right. So what would you say to those people that are out there? Like you have to go through that. You have this uh, some of these struggles and issues and things like that to, to not stop doing what they're doing. Like you just kept going. It sounds like you took care of what needed to get taken care of. And then you kept going. Is it just because you were so passionate about like, what, what is it that can drive somebody to, to keep going, even though they're getting knocked down, they're losing some money on the house, they're making mistakes. It's very easy to get into this self doubt. I think. It is. And I mean, and I think at the end of the day, you're, you really, how much do you believe in, in yourself? I mean, I, I don't know. Every person is different and um, it is kind of my personality that, I mean, if you hand me a challenge, then all it does is just light a fire that I'm going to prove that I can get through that. So, I mean, I think what you really have to, you have to like a lot of growth in this whole process has been a personal growth for me and being able to, develop my confidence in myself and to believe in myself when I've got all these little, you know, all these little people in my ears telling me why I shouldn't do this or, you know, you know, when last year was tough and you're looking at the bottom line and, you know, it stinks and well, you know, how much longer are we going to do this? I mean, uh, there's always going to be something there where there are going to be things that happen in life. And um, I think it's just a matter of listening to, your gut and what is your gut telling you? What is it that you want out of life? And I already was feeling so much of the benefit of this business, even with all of the stress that was coming with it and with the personal things in my life that just, I knew in my heart that that was the path that, you know, that's, that was where I was heading. And so I believe that I still do believe it, even with, you know, all the negativity that's out there and, you know, all the challenges that come along and the people that will talk and, but that's, you know, at the end of the day, this is my life and this is what, what I want and I believe in myself. And so, and I think that's number one is, you know, you got to really know yourself and don't ever let anything stop you from, from what it is that you want out of this life. It makes me feel good what I'm doing. I mean, I actually feel good. It's crazy. Like, how can you feel good about flipping houses? But I mean, I feel that I do help people and I love to make people happy when they're in their homes. And, um, I love what I, I feel like I give back to my contractors and the relationships that I've built over that. And I especially love what I'm able to give to my family and a local charity that I'm involved in because of what I'm doing now. So um, that's, that's what it is for me. That's awesome. Obviously I get, you know, like I believe it cause I, you know, it gives me chills when I say it. So when you know, when you feel it that deep, then you know, that's the right thing. So. Absolutely. Well, uh, and your husband is doing, is doing well now. Great. He's fully recovered. Yes. I'm okay. very, very blessed. So awesome. Fully recovered. And, um, so fully recovered, you're back at it. How are things going now? So you, you came to flip hacking live, took some things from there, but how, like, how is the, you said you, you feel like there's already been significant change. Like, how do you feel like things are going now? Like, are, have you come out from that kind of bottom and on an uptick now and you feel it? I mean, I can yes. kind of hear it. Um, well, I mean, not only are we just having a better year in terms of numbers, you know, um, profit wise, but then we're going to close on seven this year versus the four and four from the years before. So, you know, moving in the direction where you're just, you have more transactions, that's always a good thing, but it's more um, just knowing that I have a direction. I have, I have vision and I have goal. I mean, it was always there before, but I just couldn't quantify it. I didn't really know where I was going. I knew that I, I loved what I was doing, but I just, I didn't have a real direction. I just was flying by the seat of my pants and now I feel like, um, like I, I have set goals, um, and I'm moving always in that forward motion. So I have, um, so I'm still selling my houses, 
myself listing them. And that will be one of the things to go eventually. But I have um, a transaction broker um, who um, assists me with all of my listings now. So she basically takes care of, of all of that. She also does all the offers for new properties for me. So if I, if I have something that is on the MLS, for instance, or any type of documentation, she completes all of that. Um, and all of this I just hired since I've been back from Flip Hacking Live. So I hadn't even thought I knew that I needed to do it. But so I've hired her and then I've spent the last two weeks um, training my new office administrative um, assistant. We, um, so I've, I've got her going. We're in the new shared office space, which is, which is big. Um, we're streamlining our processes. You know, I've had contractor meetings. We've talked about the, our core values and the vision of the company and where we're headed. Um, I've just taken control of things more in these last, um, like, I mean, like five, six weeks. So, and just feel like that, just being able to know that if I'm going to grow, that means that I'm going to have to let some things go in terms of the control that I have over them and, and being able to pass that on to someone else. So um, it, it just needed to happen because I was, we were still going to hit a ceiling where we weren't, you know, I know a ceiling is always like the topic that comes up, but even with a big vision, there was, it was going to be impossible to break through that ceiling with the processes in place or lack of that, that we had or I had. So Cool. So it sounds like you've got, you've got this idea now. So you, you can see the vision, you can start thinking of it more like a business and being more planned than reactionary. So before it was very reactionary. It's the same as me. I had the same yeah. journey. So um, kind of by design, right? Business by design now and mm -hmm. starts looking yeah. at it differently to try to think about, you know, should I do this? Do I need to do this? All of those things. So I'm excited for you. I'm, uh, I've enjoyed kind of some of the time that we spent together, you know, getting to know you. We, we had a little mini meetup in Pensacola, like we talked about. So I got to get to know you better there. And it's, it's pretty cool to see how I feel like when I had Ariane and Chris on the, on the podcast, they said, well, we saw your kind of growth and we wanted to be a part of that. And then you saw their growth and you wanted to be a part of that. And it's just, I'll tell you what I'm even excited for is you starting your growth and then someone coming to you saying, I want to be a part of that. And it's just this kind of cycle that goes and goes and goes. And it's this never ending flow of information, of motivation, of success stories that we can have that become part of who we are. And even going back further, if you go talk to Andy, Andy was the person that I kind of plugged into and saw and wanted to see, be part of that and, and Justin and everybody else. So yeah. it's, that's what this is all about. This is, you know, sharing the information. And I'm sure that if we asked Ariane, you know, would you have still called Shannon with this one deal, knowing that she is going to start this business and start growing the way that she did and, and everything. And I can guarantee 110% that she would say, absolutely. Yeah. Because Absolutely. It's about, you think so too? Yeah, that's who they are. But then it, it's amazing to me in this industry, I mean, how close your business is and, um, in Pensacola. And then there were, you know, three others in addition to me that were at our, at our sushi dinner. Um, and I mean, like Jansen, researching into my office space before I even made it home from that dinner to help me out. Um, and that that's all around us. I mean, I've already hooked up with so many investors and wholesalers and realtors. And it just seems like that the more I find that I give to people, the more I get back. And I love so much about this group that we have because I just feel like that that's the mentality. And I don't feel that, I mean, yes, it's fun competition, but um, everybody is just so willing to help each other and, and I love being, I hope I can be a part of that. You know, I, mean, I hope that I can help somebody like Arian and Chris helped, helped us. So, Well, you already have, and you're doing it on a regular basis inside the Facebook group and everywhere else. And I'm excited to see at the events and watch you grow along with us because I've seen right when you jumped in, you're, you're incredibly active. You're constantly answering questions. Even some of them you're going, I, I might not be the right person to answer this, but this is what I do. And that will start another conversation with, well, hey, did you ever think about doing this? And you never know because if you don't get involved and you don't put your 
name out there and throw your hat in the ring and say, Hey, if you didn't do that with Ariane and Chris, you didn't say, Hey, I'm interested. What are you guys doing? This is really cool. I see that you're not really at work anymore. What are you doing? Uh, <laughs> tell me more about this. This sounds exciting to me. And if you hadn't had done that and kind of kept knocking on their door, then they wouldn't have called you with that deal. And who knows where you'd be right now. And the same thing with this, if you don't consistently just put your hat in the ring, answer questions. Sometimes the feedback that you get is somebody else who sees things a little bit differently and say, Hey, make this little tweak or I was doing that, but now I do this and this is why. And that's really the power of, of what we, what we have here. And so I'm excited to see where you go and your growth and, and everybody else, frankly, in the runway and altitude programs and, and what we do over this next year and get ready for flip packing live next year and see where you guys are a year from now. So do you have any specific goals for this year of, of 2020? Do you have anything lined out or are you just kind of like, you know what, I'm going to build out the systems and uh, I'm going to do well, more houses than I did last year. My goal is 12 flips, but I, I think we, I'm hoping that we blow that out of the water too. Um, and honestly, my goal for 2020 is to get to altitude. So that's probably one of my biggest. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I want to do those things, but I also want to see my business grow from the standpoint of those processes. So yes, I want to do, I could probably keep going like I had been before flip hacking and made it to 12, but it's, it's a different energy. And, you know, I do feel I've never considered myself a, you know, entrepreneur or, um, but I've had to accept that I am. And, um, and I want to, I want to act like one and move in that direction. So I think, you know, that's the biggest thing for me is that I feel now just like I have a handle on, on this direction and my goals are clearer now. So. Well, I, you know, in the, in the time that we spent together, I think there's no doubt that you are, you're, you're driven, you're, uh, you're task oriented. You're, you're just, you have, you, you know where you want to go and I can see it. There's like this energy about you at every time that you're in the room, that you're talking to people, you're just, you're ready to go. And so uh, even from the last three years, you breaking it down, you're an entrepreneur through and through. You just kind of didn't know it yet. Now you found it. So it's just, I felt the same way. I was this kind of caged animal inside the military and now just <laughs> been let loose and watch out world. So, uh, absolutely. Well, I can't watch out, enough. watch out everybody. Shannon's coming. So, uh, <laughs> be careful. All right, Shannon. Well, I appreciate you. Spe next. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Come on, come on over. I'm happy to have you. Yeah. Hey, you, hey uh, I'd love to, I'd love to make some money off some wholesale fees from you. So come on absolutely. over. Happy to do it. So we, um, I had a really good time with you today. I know for everybody listening, uh, and Shannon, you guys had, you know, you could spend your time doing whatever you want to do and you decided to spend it with me. So I really appreciate it. And um, if you guys don't know, we're on YouTube. So if you want to see Shannon and see her new office, it's beautiful beige wall. It looks awesome. <laughs> she, you can uh, check it out on YouTube. Look at seven figure flipping. And then uh, Shannon just found us uh, where she was at. She goes, I wish that I could watch these pot or listen to these podcasts on, on my phone. You know, I just wish that I could listen to it on my phone. We're at dinner. And I said, you can listen to it on your phone. It's called the, I said, do you have an iPhone? Let me see that thing. It's called the Apple podcast app. Maybe you've heard of it. So we downloaded it for her. We got her all set up and now she's watching them all the time. So she was watching them in our email. So if you go to housekeepinghq.com, you can sign up kind of on our email. We'll send these out. And they're also, all the podcasts are on that page. And in fact, when you listen to this, we might have already launched our new sevenfigureflipping.com website. So you can go to sevenfigureflipping.com, check that out. We're launching a new site. So I, may, I hope this goes out around that time. So I don't, the yeah. team doesn't go, don't talk about that for another week. So um, you can find the podcast on there, but she's kind of watching. I think you were watching them on video, right? On the, on the link or something like that. I was, and thank you. I thought I was going to get out of this meeting without you going there, but thank you for throwing me under the bus. Yes. So, now, but like I told you beforehand, so yes, I found them. I've downloaded the app and now I know how to get them to my home pod that my husband bought for me and um, set up in two rooms. So now when I'm getting ready for my day, I listen to my podcast through my home pod. So um, nice. Yeah. So yeah, I, I guess you can do <laughs> home pod, Alexa, what, I don't know, whatever, whatever you've got, figure out we're on like Stitcher and SoundCloud and iTunes and all that stuff. So uh, anyway, check it out. If you don't know that there's an app for your phone, like this was revolutionary for Shannon, but it, but listen to this in the same meeting, Shannon shared something with me that I had no idea that I could do on Facebook. So if you guys don't think that like I just, at that time I go, you don't know how to get the podcast on your phone. Like 
you know, that's come on. Everybody knows that. Right. And she shared something with me and she looked at me like I was crazy. Like, she's like, you don't know how to do this. This is awesome. This is changes the game for me on Facebook. So look, we're all learning, constantly learning. It just, if you think that you know everything, then turn this off right now because you're, you, you will not grow. And so I'm constantly growing, constantly thirsting for knowledge, going to events, trying to figure out who, who else I can network with, who's the people that I can talk to, what can I do to get better as a person, professionally, personally, as a father, as a husband, father of God, everything that is going on in my life, I'm trying to figure out who to get around or what to read or what to put in front of me. And that's what I love about doing these. You know, I get to do these podcasts, I get to interview you and I get to learn something about you and something that I might need to know, like becoming really good friends with my county inspector. So that's my big takeaway from here. I wrote it down right here on my notepad. So I'm going to go send some like donuts or muffins over to them. And Oh yes, they got good presents from me after because at the end of the day, I mean, it could have been a lot worse and they helped, they did help. It, you know, I'm the one that got myself into that position. So it wasn't their fault. So yep. they were good. All right, everybody. Thanks for spending time with us and um, check us out. Leave us a rating and review. I'd love to, I'd love to hear from you about what you like uh, and send us an email at info at Hustling HQ. If there's somebody that you want to hear, something that you want us to talk about or something that would help you in your business to, to learn about on the podcast. I want to give away as much free information, free content, all that stuff on the podcast as we can and bring you guys awesome guests and uh, their experiences and how they can help you in your business, whether you're flipping or wholesaling or whatever you're doing in your business and in life. So, all right. Thanks for hanging out on the seven figure flipping podcast. I'll see you guys next time. Bye Shannon. Bye. Thanks for listening to the seven figure flipping podcast with Bill Allen. If you want to grow and scale your house flipping or wholesaling business, check out more insider tips and strategies from the nation's most successful real estate investors at sevenfigureflipping.com.